Today, let's learn to draw the cute sea otter that eats purple sea urchins. Start with a brown marker and let's draw our little sea otter's face about the middle of the page so you'll have room for the ocean down here. It has a little diamond shaped nose, straight line coming down, and then the letter J on the side and a backwards J over there. Also, his little eyes are just round little circles. And his ears are just like little C's on his head. Off to the side, we need his body. This is kind of an unusual part. You're gonna come around and back up like a bowl. It's because he's floating on his back, eating those delicious sea urchins. Then we'll make kind of a wavy line coming across here, rest of his body. Now let's add his arms. From his shoulder over here is his first little paw. Let's put four claws there. He has very sharp claws to get the sea urchins off of the ocean floor. There's his other paw. And then here's one of his little legs and the other little leg. He also has a long kind of wide flat tail. There we go. And he does love eating sea urchins and the kind that are found in Southern California where this um, sea otter lives, they have purplish shells. So let's use a purple to outline. They're round with spikes. Let's put one up here in this hand. He's getting ready to snack on it. Mmm, delicious. Now these sea urchins, they feed on the kelp. Kelp is another word for seaweed. Let's draw a line that would represent our ocean right here. About right here, because this little sea otter, he's floating right up on top of the ocean while he's eating his sea urchins. And then on the bottom of the ocean, let's have a rock right down here and some kelp growing up out of the rock. Kelp has a long center stem. It reaches up towards the light and attaches itself to the rock. And then there's these little round, I call them little round poppers, they're full of air. Helps the seaweed float up to the surface. And then you have the leaf, the green leaf. Well, these sea urchins, your leaves can be kind of shaped like a football. There you go, there's a little popper and leaf. You can watch some videos on the sea urchin and sea otters to learn this interesting science. The sea urchins, they go right for the base, right here at the bottom of the kelp. That's where they go bite off first. They take a bite right here out of the root so that it detaches the seaweed and then they munch down on all of this seaweed. Hey, luckily though, sea otters, they can eat 1,500 sea urchins a day. Woo, that is a lot of sea urchins, isn't it? It's called the ecosystem, the circle of life. Or sea urchins eat the kelp, sea otters eat the sea urchins. Now back in the background, we have some islands. The Channel Islands are down here in this area. So way out in the distance, you might see a few islands. And then it's always fun to draw a nice sunshine at the beach. And even if you want some clouds, and a rainbow. That's always a fun detail to add, isn't it? I like outlining in marker and then just coloring in with crayons. Then I can still see my outlines. And of course, for the water, oh, I have a favorite, favorite secret. For large areas, I like to use a crayon that has no peeling on it. And I could just use the side of the crayon because it takes a long time to color in something as large as the ocean with a crayon. There we go. So here's my big blue crayon that's peeled. I call this my ocean crayon. Watch this on the side. You can even go right over top of your seaweed because we're gonna put a little green on that. You could go right over top with your blue first. Blue and green are both cool colors similar to each other. There we go, we've got our ocean. So 
last of all, let's add a little green to our kelp. Which word do you like better, kelp or seaweed? There we go. There's our kelp. And of course you could color in your mountains. And I'll show you these up close. I made some purple mountains and a little rainbow up there. So have fun adding details and drawing your sea otter.